I bought some more stuff. Let me show you what I've got. If it's your first time here, click on the subscribe button and on the bell icon to get notifications about new videos. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoy it. Right, it's the first thing. Don't forget to share the video if you think people might be interested in it or any of the items I have. Also, um, there'll be links down below in the description for anything you may be interested in. So, if you, want, you know, maybe you want to buy one yourself. If you can buy things through Banggood or my um, Amazon store and places like that, it helps me out as well because I actually get commissions. It doesn't cost you any more, but I benefit from it. it helps support the channel. So these are two oscilloscope probes. And it's 500 megahertz. Whether this will suit my scopes, I don't know. I'll find out. So yeah, I need a 500 megahertz probe because I hacked my signal and scope. I did a video on that and got it up to like 340 megahertz bandwidth. And I thought, right, well, let's just um, let's see what we can do about this. This because uh, obviously my original scope 100 megahertz probes obviously can't cover that bandwidth. So I thought, well, I better get some better ones. So there's a 500 megahertz apparently, but they're fairly cheap. So I don't know, we'll see what we get. Moderately sharp point. It is a times 10, so there's a just fixed times 10 ratio. So that's fine. I mean, when you go to times 1, then your bandwidth actually drops down to something like 6 megahertz or something like that typically. It's, it's really narrow bandwidth when you go to times 1. So a times 10 fixed value is not that bad, I suppose. If I need a, a lower a sensitivity, then I'll just have to change probes. Handle up to 300 volts apparently. Yeah, oh, I wouldn't want to go there. It's the P6500. So I purchased, and there's the tuning information apparently. Yes, well, what's this graph going to show? Ah, oh, voltage versus frequency. Okay. So when you're down, you know, over one meg, <laughs> so they're claiming it's massive voltage, but actually only up to about, you know, say about 80 kilo or something like that. Yeah, that shouldn't really matter anyway. All right. So both of these are the same. What I should probably do is find some way of testing this, shouldn't I? Came with a little pro pack as well, so you've got some colour rings, adjustment tool, standard BNC to probe adapter. So that's another reason I chose this one I think because it came with this adapter, which is quite handy to have. I should kind of really try this out, shouldn't I? I feel like I should try them out. Okay, so I've got the probe hooked up to my scope. I've got it going back to the probe conversation because obviously I need to tune it first. Let's turn the measurement off. And you can see there's a bit of compensation issue here, as you'd expect, because I haven't tuned them yet. So let's uh, get the little screwdriver out and give it an adjustment. It's a bit tricky to get that one all right. It's about there. Yeah, okay, I think that's about it. So that's that one. And I'll do the same with the other probe. I'm not going to bore with that one, but it can compensate at least, so that's fine. I should do a frequency measurement test on this, shouldn't I? And see what it can go up to. Let's hook the probe up directly into the input of my IF signal generator. And we'll have a look at that and see what that comes out of. Get your data. Right, so I should just plug in there like that. So now it's got a BNC type of data on there. Just plug into my signal generator now. 0.5 volts, no modulation. Let's do one megahertz. Okay. Measure. Uh, on times 10, I'm going to check that, shouldn't I? Yep, yeah, on times 10. We'll just measure the Effective bandwidth, that's what I'm looking at right now. So that's the 1 megahertz, and we're getting 1 volt IMS right there. Oh, sorry, my 5 megahertz. Get it right. Let's go 10 megahertz. Still 1 volt. 50 megahertz. It's about 900 millivolts. 100 megahertz. 707. That's 100 megahertz. Well, that's 100 megahertz probes, aren't they? That's not 500 megahertz. 
Okay, well let's go 200 megahertz. I think it says 800, I can't quite see. 300 megahertz. Oh, it misses 1.1 volts. It's actually going up again. So it must have like a, a spot where it, it dips and comes back up again. So that's interesting. 400 megahertz. That's where the scope scars cutting out, I think. So yeah, it's 476, it's less than half. So 340 megahertz is where I know the scope's 3 dB point was. And it's still reading out. It's probably also got that 1 mega ohm input rather than 550 ohm input. I might have to look at um, loading this differently. But 50 ohm. Now 50 ohm agrees with it. Go figure. Okay, well, let's go back again. 250 megahertz. That's okay, that's like. Yep, yeah, that's above. So it's at least 250 megahertz anyway. 300. Yeah. Let's try 500. I know the scope can't see it very well, but it's there. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's probing. 450 megahertz. 400. Yeah, okay. 100. It's got a weird response. It's actually getting lower at the lower frequencies. That's interesting. It's like it's got like a bell curve, but you know, it comes up and then down. I was betting DC response up to that point. These were cheap, maybe that's why. What did it say in a manual about that? What this old manual there is. Bandwidth, this says 500 megahertz. Yep, it says 1 mega ohm input impedance, so this says to use 1 mega ohm. Go figure. Oh well, I don't know. It's alright for measuring high frequency stuff. What I should do now is get my other probes and, and stick it in there and see what they come out like. Or standard ones. Okay, so now I've got my standard Siglent probes hooked up. These are supposed to be 100 megahertz probes. We'll just do a comparison. So this is doing 1 volt at 10 megahertz, so it doesn't have that depth like the other ones do. 1 megahertz, yep, still there. 1 volt. Okay, 50 megahertz, 950 millivolts, 100 megahertz, 713. So these are just over 100 megahertz probes. Alright, so 200 megahertz, that's dipping down, 250, 300, that's kind of flattens off again now actually, it's interesting. 350, yeah, so that is. Not that bad actually, the original signal ones. They do dip down, but they're not that bad. They still work in there. Yes, these cover high frequencies better, but they don't cover anything below 100 megahertz properly, it would seem. That's weird. So maybe I won't recommend these particular ones because this doesn't really do what it's supposed to do. It's not DC. It's not flat to 500 megahertz. Yes, it goes up to 500, but it ain't flat. I won't recommend it. If you need someone who does a high frequency, they're not worried about low frequency, but maybe I'll we'll suit you, but I'm disappointed in that. Alright, see what's in this one. Well, not that exciting, I think. Here's some uh, JFET op amps, part number TO081CP. I had these on my purchase list for some reason, and when I did an order for something else, it, this got added on. So, I think I needed it for something, I don't remember what, and it was... I don't remember what it was for now, but anyway, I've got some now. Must have been to fix something, maybe. I really don't remember, but I've got some now. Uh, it happens. Oh, so this one. Thanks to my Patreons that support me, help me to buy things from Mailbag. Even if sometimes I don't got a clue what I'm actually buying. Or why I'm buying it, because you know, um, lollies. Okay, I didn't buy lollies. Okay, right, I purchased some of these before, a while ago. And I'll show you what it is. These are simmer stats for ovens, or for an oven, I should say. My oven has two of the rings on the top are failing, they're being funny, but one's erratically working, the other one's staying on all the time, not turning off, or it changes, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And I've had to replace a similar step before in that same oven, I've done a video on that some time ago, 
I don't know, a year or so ago probably. More than that, probably two years ago. And um, that was a bad simmer stat then. So I've had to buy some more. It's basically a biometallic strip in there. What happens is it heats up and um, shuts on and off. So 15 amp rated. So these are MP101. And exactly the same as the pot I used last time. No different. But uh, the issue I had is that, you know, I last time I had one which just wouldn't turn off. I did an autopsy in that part and showed you the inside of it as well at the time. So look for Simpson oven repair, something like the video for that one. I might even link it down below or up in the card up there if I remember to do it. If you want to see that, I forget to put it up there. Ask me in the comments and I'll, and I'll add it in so you can go and have a look at the video. But I'm going to do another video on repairing the oven again or these using these two parts because uh, it's failed again but on different ones. Not the same one this time, some different elements. So, yeah. Alright, let's see what for this one. Well, no, I used the wrong thing. I haven't had this knife here. I used to be using this knife. Oops. A whole bunch more USB connectors. I think these are very light, the ones I got before, but I've got some other smaller ones in here USB minis, micro. There was a micro too, I think. No, there's minis as well. No, they're all minis. So that's three minis, and you got the rest, rest of them are USB 2s. That's USB 2 as well. Yeah, all USB 2 connectors. No USB 3. So, yeah, they're stocking up in bits and pieces. So, again, these will be linked down below. Share the video with your friends and that sort of stuff. If anyone might be wanting this, have a chat down below in the comments. Give us a thumbs up, subscribe. Subscribe, give us a thumbs up. Whichever order you want to do it, and I don't really don't care, just do one of those or both. And uh, I'll see you next time. Catch you later. A bunch more BNC connectors. BNC connectors, you dumb bastard. They're not BNC connectors.